Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and home builders are going to be the next group to fall apart after the banking collapse. So today we're reviewing an article from Market Watch that really explains how the new home builders are going to be affected by the recent banking collapse. And a lot of people don't realize, and I've been really screaming at the top of my lungs, a lot of these new home builders have unfavorable financing that they will need to refinance this year. A lot of people actually have to start refinancing in August. And what that's gonna do is completely destroy their profit. Now, again, as a result of the banking collapse, a lot of people fear that it is going to restrict the lending specifically in the commercial sector. So we're going to go into all of that. But the interesting thing is, is a lot of new home builders aren't letting on just how much trouble that they're in. As you can see, U.S. builder confidence rises for the third consecutive month, despite high mortgage rates and construction cost. The Home Builder Confidence Index rose to 44 in March, signaling an improvement in builder sentiment. I don't know about you, but I think that's a bunch of nonsense because remember, we have one of the highest cancellation rates in history. And the only reason that they're selling right now, and let's be honest, you guys should know this, the only reason they're even showing profit is the massive price cuts and buying incentives, specifically temporary buy downs. They have put so much money in temporary buy downs. It's unbelievable. So I hear them trying to be excited. And not only that, you guys, apparently Lennar beat expectations. As you can see here, Lennar Corp shares are facing selling pressure Wednesday morning, despite moving higher after the home builder reported better than expected financial reserve plates Tuesday. Lennar estimated the revenue at 5.9 billion. They got 6.49 billion. But the thing is, is when your estimates are so low, it's going to be easy to break those estimates. But what I'm really, really wanted to pay attention to, because some people are like, oh, Travis, what do you think about Lennar? They're doing so great. But when I actually, you know, look deeper, their new orders have decreased 10% and the backlog also fell 29%. So they may not be doing so well. And plus we're only on the second inning here. But I think it's really, really interesting to see, you know, these new home builder stocks so high. Now, obviously I've taken my money out of Fidelity. I am not going to play the stock market, but you know, I would be interested in actually shorting Lennar. I'm, I'm not saying that you guys should do that, but it's crazy how high their stock is still. So what that tells me also is, you know, the cat's not completely out of the bag with these new home builders. When I went to Seattle, Phoenix, and Las Vegas, I was able to show you guys thousands and thousands of homes that were just sitting there. I was able to show you guys how overexposed some of these new home builders are in specific markets. Now they're gonna do everything they can not to show that because they have stocks to sell, they want additional investments. But I've been telling you guys that a lot of them, in my opinion, are banking on the spring and summer buying season. And when they realize that that spring and summer buying season is gonna fizzle out as a result of unaffordability, obviously, right? I mean, where are these buyers gonna come from? We only have so many pent up buyers that can afford to get off the sidelines, right? And then the other people that are on the sidelines are smart enough to know, like me, that these houses are are overvalued and overpriced. And by purchasing this uh, house right now, it's essentially purchasing a toxic asset that we're going to be stuck to for who knows how long, five years, seven years, 10 years. I think the entire home building industry is in for a super rude awakening moving forward into 2023. Let's jump into this Market Watch article right now. This is a Barron's article called Home Builders Could Suffer Next as banks flounder. So really, really good comparison here. I think this is a really good read. It will be linked in my description if you guys wanna read this on your own. The recent bank collapse is affecting the housing market in more ways than one. Regional bank concerns are weighing on builders who now may face challenges in accessing credit. So here lies the comparison. Accessing credit may be much more difficult and we already know it's gonna be much more expensive for new home builders, as broader worries have helped drive mortgage rates lower. One closely watched monthly gauge of builder sentiment gained two points in March as members of the National Association of Home Builders said 
present conditions for home sales and buying traffic improve. While the reading below 50 reflects still negative sentiment, the gain to the highest level since September 2022 represents some improvement or over optimism. I just think this is over optimism. Even as builders continue to deal with stubbornly high construction costs and material supply chain disruptions, they continue to report strong pent up demand as buyers are waiting for interest rates to drop and turning more to the new home market due to the shortage of existing inventory. So what we're going to so what I'm seeing in my local housing market is the new home builds start listing their prices under resale property, which is really 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 crazy. And I hear how this article is saying, you know, stubborn high construction costs, right, and material supply chain disruptions, but let's make no mistake, these new home builders have a lot of padding in these prices and can afford to go down drastically and still be okay. So if some of these people can't get financing, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to have to fire, sell, and liquidate their assets in order to survive, right? And they'll probably offer those discounts first to an institutional investor. And the institutional investors right now are crippled. They're becoming crippled. Why? Because everything is breaking fundamentals, you guys. When things break fundamentals, they break as we're seeing in the banking sector and we will see in the housing market and new construction niche as well. But recent bank troubles stand to impact builders' ability to get loans, the trade group said. So again, the ability to get loans. A follow-on effect of the pressure on regional banks as well as continued Fed tightening will be further constraints for acquisition development and construction loans for builders across the nation. When ADNC loan conditions are tight, lot inventory constricts and adds an additional hurdle to housing affordability. The high cost of buying a home has been in the spotlight as mortgage rates and home prices have risen. The typical monthly payment as measured by Redfin hit a new high of $2,563, the brokerage said last week, an increase of nearly $600 from a year prior. Just really, really shocking unaffordability. I don't even know how people can afford to buy houses right now. I mean, think about it. It's crazy. A reaction to market worries that began with the failure of Silicon Valley Bank sent mortgage rates lower last week, the Mortgage Bankers Association said Wednesday, and that is absolutely true. Mortgage rates have been plummeting, but not at the pace of the 10-year treasury because the lenders are holding on to that position. They don't want to, they want to have a higher margin because there's such a change in interest rates. They're, they're not going to change at that pace, right? If it goes up, they're going to change at that pace. But when it goes down, they're going to slowly go down because to, again, to get those profits. Treasury yields declined last week as market concerns over bank closures and the potential for broader ripple effects triggered a flight to safety in treasury bonds. Decline pushed mortgage rates for all loan types lower. The trade group's measure of the average contract rate of 30-year fixed rate mortgage declined from 6.71 from 6.79 the week prior. One measure of daily rates shows that the declines of volatile continued into the week as investors grapple with turmoil in the banking sector and the Federal Reserve's expectations expectations ahead of next week's Federal Open Market Committee meeting. Mortgage rates tracked by Mortgage News Daily dropped 19 basis points on Monday to 6.57, rose to 6.75 on Tuesday, and then fell back to 6.55% on Wednesday. Talk about volatility in the mortgage and banking market. The drop in rates last week have increased mortgage demand. The Mortgage Association's purchase index gained a seasonally adjusted 7%, while its refinance index gained 5%. Despite the increase, both indexes remained well below year ago levels, with the purchase index down 38% and the refinance index down a whopping 74% compared to the same week in 2022. Banks are making less money. That's a fact. Banks are making a lot less money right now. So it is likely that they, you know, so it is possible that those restrictions do happen and it really cripples a lot, not only just the tech companies, right? It's going to cripple commercial builders, commercial residential builders, new home builders. If these builders can no longer get financing and the financing that they do get is astronomically more expensive than the financing they got during COVID and the pandemic, 
we will see these guys liquidate their assets to stay alive. And what if they default? Think about this. If these new home builders default on some of these loans, the way commercial loans work is those builders will give the assets or the homes back to the lender. So it stands to reason, and everyone knows that lenders aren't in the business of managing real estate. Those lenders will sell those homes for under market value in order to recoup the losses that they took from the new home builders defaulting. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that affects the smaller new home builders versus the bigger new home builders. And it's also going to be interesting to see how much more it affects these grossly overexposed new home builders. In places like Phoenix, where there's an abundance of new home building, say that area crashes, say they default on their loan and they have to give those houses back to the, to the lender. Imagine the type of pandemony and price crashing that would create, right? And I want to tell you guys that that is very, very possible. When you turn off the money supply to these builders that are used to the cheap money, that are used to high profits, it's going to change and impact the housing market in ways that we've been waiting for as people on the sideline that want to see the housing market prices crash. I don't want to see people lose their house. I don't want to see people go into foreclosure. I just want the housing market to be somewhat balanced, right? Just somewhat balanced. So the other 70% of people that don't own houses have a chance at home ownership. The housing market right now has essentially shown us that right now only the rich can be homeowners, right? Post 2021, only the rich can be homeowners. And even then, they're still overextended on their mortgage payment. This is absolutely bonkers, you guys. Now, again, I think the catalyst is going to be new home builders. Obviously, it started with the banks. That was kind of crazy. And then it's going to, the next phase is new home builders. Mark my words. I think, again, that happens around spring or summer when they realize that what happened to all the buyers? Well, we know what happened to all the buyers. They were forced to the sideline. The article concludes, the decline in mortgage may not outweigh other industry headwinds. While financial system stress has recently reduced long-term interest rates, which will help housing demand in the coming weeks, the cost and availability of housing inventory remains critical constraint for prospective buyers. This is all true. We do need more inventory, so we do need the new home builders to continue to build but we need them to build houses that are more practical with fundamentals and that are more affordable. And then when they make the affordable houses, we need to make sure that institutional investors don't swarm in and purchase all of those affordable houses like what happened the last three years. Now, in this market, I don't think that institutional investors and investors are going to run into the market and save us. And I'm talking about the big institutional investors because they are suffering as well. They were also rug pulled and they're going to start falling apart. Mark my words, we've already seen that at Blackstone, at BlackRock as well. We've already seen this happen. They've defaulted on, on their loans already. So this is so we don't really have to guess. What we have to do right now is we have to pay attention to fundamentals and we have to ask ourselves, is this really going to last? If we ask ourselves those questions and we stay more logical and more cautious, the answers are easy, but when we allow our emotions to take over and that fear of missing out to take over, all of that logic and all of the sacrifice that we've been making over the last two years or however long it's been is thrown out the window. So again, I'm not trying to tell you guys I have a crystal ball, but I am trying to make you aware that buying a house is the biggest financial transaction of most people's lives and getting a mortgage usually lasts 30 years. And also I want to warn you about purchasing and having reverse equity. I lost my house. I lost about 300,000 in equity in Southern California. I lost my job as a result of the recession. I was in the mortgage. I can no longer afford my mortgage payment. I could not sell because I was upside down $300,000. It led to short sell, then foreclosure, then bankruptcy, repo, and I got a tax lien from the deficiency notice on the sale of that property, even though I filed insolvent. So, you know, to me, what I'm saying is the risk versus reward is just not there. The math just doesn't add up right now. So again, what I'm saying is, is despite all this craziness, look at what's happening and mark my words. New home builders are the next in line to fall apart.
but only time will tell. And either way, you guys, I really appreciate you following along with me on this journey. And I really hope you guys got some new perspective, insights, and value from today's video. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck and I hope you win.